Mr. Zuckerberg, you and the companies before us, I know you don't mean to, it to be so, but you have blood on your hands. You have a product. You have a product that's killing people. That harsh statement was just one of a series of sharp accusations as Senate Judiciary members recently grilled tech executives about the dangers of social media. It was an emotional hearing with families of child victims in attendance. And the hearing came less than a week after police arrested a man accused of raping a 10-year-old girl in East Harlem. Investigators say Draquan Drayton Howard connected with the child on an app and sexually assaulted her that same night. Sexual exploitation of kids online is a growing problem in the country. According to one study, daily tips of online sexual abuse material surged over the last decade to reach 100,000 reports per day. I want to bring in licensed teen therapist Matthew Maynard to talk a little bit more about really this growing, massive problem. Yeah. First of all, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Well, Tell us on that, when we're talking about child sexual abuse and the, and the intense dangers that kids face online, what are you seeing in your practice? Um, I've, I have kids as very young as like 13, 14 years old that are meeting up with people on the internet that they don't know. The parents have no idea who these people are. Um, and because of the apps and some of the technology that's being used by child predators and pedophiles, um, they can't actually get an understanding of what their, their kids are even doing. And so a lot of kids are meeting with random strangers and the parents really are having a hard time navigating a lot of these challenges because of all of the privacy protections. Yeah, and the, the physical abuse and the actual very real danger of that is one massive component with it. And many of the families that were in that Senate hearing were just those families. Yeah. But there's also the mental health problem, uh, which is a big issue too, that yeah. we've talked about for years. In his State of the City speech, Mayor Adams recently called social media companies a public health hazard. Here's part of what he had to say. Companies like TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, are fueling a mental health crisis by designing their platforms with addictive and dangerous features. We cannot stand by and let big tech monetize our children's privacy and jeopardize their mental health. You had just addressed the privacy issue. Let's talk about the mental health yeah. issue. What are you seeing there? A lot of things. Um, teenage uh, body dysmorphia with young girls, teenage girls has skyrocketed. So a lot of uh, eating disorders are on the rise. I see a lot of kids who are also experiencing a lot of bullying and a lot of uh, peer pressure because of how the apps are designed. Um, a lot of the challenges for teenagers is they're trying to individuate. So they're really susceptible to being influenced. And a lot of what they're seeing and experiencing on social media is having a pretty detrimental impact on what they think the standard or the norm is because of what the algorithm's feeding them. When, when you consider the, the patients who you treat, yes. um, is so, has social media sort of taken over your practice as one of the problems that you're having to deal with that you didn't used to deal with before it, it has exploded in the way it has? Yes, I mean, I've, I've been in practice for the past 10 years, so really it's always been a part of my practice, but more often, more often than not now, it's a very massive component, especially since COVID and the pandemics, it really opened up kids to being on devices and on screens in an insurmountable amount of time. It's, it's really gotten out of hand. I want to talk about uh, some of what you're saying in terms of the tips that you have. Yeah. Um, so if we can put up that full frame. Well, well, actually, before we get to that, I want to put up the warning signs. Um, if a parent is noticing uh, what, like the, these things that they need to look out for, you've given us four things that parents should focus on that m may be a red flag. So talk us through some of these. Yeah, so one of the main things that you're going to look for is, is you're going to see a very significant, intense emotional outbursts that you're not going to, they're not going to really jive with the context. They're going to be very out of the context or the norm of what they're more often than not experiencing. That's a big one. Um, the other one is, is they're going to start to withdraw from activities that they used to actually once enjoy, and they may actually get more and more invested in using social media and being more on their phones. Um, the other one was uh, a hyperfixation on food, or they're gonna have like extreme weight loss. For a lot of the teen girls and a lot of adolescent girls, um, a lot of the body dysmorphic symptoms are really starting to ramp up, largely because of what they're seeing through Instagram and um, through uh, a lot of TikTok now as well. Um, and then I believe the but last one- secretive. 
behavior. Yeah, yeah the last one was secretive behavior, where they're going to start... Um, you're going to start catching them lying and doing things that are really like out of character and really out of the norm for what you were used to seeing. They're not going to be lying about small things. They're going to be really like leading you on some pretty big lies. And so here's the conundrum, though, because the Surgeon General says basically every yeah. teenager. Yeah. I think in their recent study, 95 percent of teenagers 13 yeah. to 17 are using social media. Yeah. So that that horse has left the bar. Like, you, yeah. you're not yeah. going to not be able to have them on there. So let's talk about some of the best practices so that you don't have the concerns that we're just up on the screen and have to look out for some of those things. So so what do you suggest that, that parents do? Yeah, so one of the things that I tell parents right out of the gate is don't demonize the technology. Your kids are going to be on this. There's no getting around that. All of their friends are on it. Um, people that they want to meet and want to connect with that are secondary friendships to their peers, they want to connect with, it's not going anywhere. And what you really don't want to do is start demonizing that tech because then they're not going to want to open up. They're going to feel like all you're going to do is judge and criticize them. They're really going to shut down, and that's going to close a door that you really need to stay open with, absolutely stay open with. You, and then, and then it, sometimes it's really hard to say you got to turn off your phone. But yeah. you're saying you got, you have to do that, and you need to make those rules. Yeah. So the other thing is, is do not rely on the standard parental controls that the phone companies or even the the, um, the social media apps are actually putting out. You should definitely go with more of a premium content one, where the moder the moderation, the screen time, your ability to remotely control and to get of alerts and information from your phone is well worth the money every month. That's definitely a big one. And so, so these are all concepts that you talk about in your book, which I have here. Yes. Honey, we blanked up the kids. Yes. Um, uh, tell us, what's the main takeaway that you want people to get from this book, if there is one? I know you go into more detail in the actual yeah. book. Uh, the big, the whole point of the book is to really start focusing, instead of focusing on behavior or on the content, it's really about creating character and instilling principles. So you can leverage technology to teach your kids about some pretty foundationally important character skills like consideration um, and how they're using social media, how they're talking to people over the internet, and what they're posting out there is pretty important, right? That's a big part of their character. Prioritizing their time. More often than not, kids are on their phones and devices, and they're not really prioritizing schoolwork or maybe even extracurriculars that they actually really thoroughly enjoy and have some level of positive engagement and positive self-esteem that they can build off that instead of just doom scrolling. Um, the other one might be um, uh, pr being able to, what was the other one that I had? Managing disappointment. More often than not, getting kids off of screens, they melt down, especially the younger ones. And tweens are really bad at this, but having the ability to teach them how to manage disappointment is a fundamental principle I think we could all benefit from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sooner you learn that one. <laughs> yeah, me as well. I'm still struggling with that one. <laughs> Matthew Maynard, thank you so much. We so appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.